welcome back to the Godot Report. In an FAQ on Valve's website, Valve has announced that they are actively supporting the Godot team and making sure the Godot engine works well with the Steam Deck. They are also in talks with Unity and Epic Games. Hopefully, this means that no matter what game engine you choose, your game should run on the Steam Deck with minimal configuration. Remy, Godot's project manager, said that the games he tried worked great, but there's still work to do in terms of getting the Godot editor itself to be usable. Valve also revealed that you can develop games on any Steam Deck, even a retail version. The dev kits do not have any special hardware. You simply have to put the Steam Deck in developer mode, and you can begin testing games. It's official. AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or FSR, has been added to Godot. FSR renders the game at a lower resolution and then upscales the image to your monitor's native resolution. The idea is this should provide a significant boost in performance with minimal loss in image quality. Unlike Nvidia's DLSS, AMD FSR is GPU agnostic, meaning it can work on AMD, Nvidia, and Intel GPUs. Since AMD FSR has been implemented in the Godot engine itself, that means that any game made with the Godot engine will automatically support this feature with little to no configuration by the dev required. Godot games already run so well, even on lower end hardware, but any and all options to increase performance are always welcome. Do you want to learn how to code? LearnGodot.com is offering its first course, Learn Programming in the Godot Engine. In this course, you will learn the fundamentals of programming and game development using the Godot engine. You don't need any programming experience to take this course. Everything will be taught as you go. Use coupon code KAIJU to receive 10% off your first order. Thanks to a hugely successful Kickstarter campaign, GD Quest has hired Yuri Sizov to improve Godot's interface and user experience. Specifically, they are tasked with tackling this proposal. Godot's UI system is actually quite powerful once you wrap your head around it how it all works. But users often complain that there are too many properties and it's not clear what each of them does. And so the goal of this change is not to change Godot's UI system, but rather change how information is presented to the user to make it less confusing. Godot currently has multiple different systems that control the sizing of UI elements. You can either use anchors, recs, or containers. Each of these systems work differently and serves a different purpose. The main problem is that they are all presented to the user at the same time. This proposal looks to reorganize and rename the properties so that it is more clear what everything does and how to use it. I know I've had trouble making UIs in Godot myself, so I'm glad to see this issue finally being addressed. Another progress report on Godot 4's multiplayer has been released. There are two main concepts present in all multiplayer systems some form of messaging, and some form of state replication. The current version of Godot's multiplayer system has messaging in the form of RPCs. This allows the servers and clients to talk to each other. However, there currently is no common system for replication. And so, in this past August, the Godot team had a series of meetings to design the requirements for a multiplayer replication API. The design goals for such an API are as follows. Provide an out-of-the-box solution for scene state replication across the network, allow for almost no code prototyping, be extensible with game-specific behaviors, custom reconciliation, interpolation, interest management, etc., allow ex post incremental optimizations of network code, and of course, be easy to use. So far, an initial prototype has been made. If you want to see the syntax for the prototype, I will link the full article in the description. The final implementation will be substantially different in terms of exposed low-level API and will use visual configuration nodes for better usability. Juan, the lead developer of Godot, is looking for dev teams who are currently licensed for PlayStation. While no official announcements have been made, clearly there is work being done behind the scenes to make a smooth path for devs to publish their Godot projects on the PlayStation ecosystem. The game Helms of Fury has reached their Kickstarter goal, and they didn't just reach it, but surpassed it. With a goal of $15,000 Canadian, they were able to raise $16,482. Backers can expect the rewards, including a Steam key of the game, around March of 2023. Branch is a super simple add-on for Godot to show the current Git branch you are working with. It shows a button with the current branch name. Whiteboard is a simple whiteboard app for writing text, inserting pictures, and drawing. 
Each tool has different settings and properties. An integrated presentation system is available. Place focus points on your whiteboard and play them back like a slideshow. GD Unit 3 is a framework for testing GD scripts and scenes within the Godot editor. GD Unit 3 is very useful for test-driven development and will get your code bug-free. Textalog is a user-friendly dialog system with characters, text boxes, dialog bubbles, and many more planned features for your games. Event System is an easy but powerful event system implementation for the Godot engine. This will help you manage events sequentially, easy to implement, and highly customizable, allowing you to execute code fragments in order according to the conditions you give it. In Switchland Rescue, travel the kingdom of Switchland, freeing your beloved from his confinement. But do not think it will be an easy task, since on the way you will meet a thousand and one dangers that will require cunning and skill. Hunt bounties around the city on this jazzy, tactical, turn-based experience. Hire crew members, gear them up, strategize around their unique abilities, and cash that juicy bounty in the Black Pepper Crew. Cyberway is an endless driving game featuring a 1990s aesthetic with synthwave soundtrack. The latest update added a vaporwave game mode. In Romano's Adventure, make your way moving around to Tromino's in this puzzle platformer adventure. Travel through 8 unique worlds and a total of 43 levels to claim your rightfully deserved bite of cake. Die Frosty is an unsurvival puzzle game, where your one and only goal is to kill your icy QB character no matter how. Interact with many obstacles, use really dumb ways to die while melting your brain to beat each level. Skycliffs is a single-player, fast-paced action shooter and resource management roguelike where you fight your way through procedurally generated multi-height sky islands. Project Heartbeat is a cute, community-driven rhythm game inspired by titles such as Clone Hero and Project Diva, featuring music from top artists of the Eurobeat genre made popular by the Initial D anime and manga. You can also create your own charts and share them with your friends. Lingo is a first-person world puzzle game with a large, abstract world to explore. With its epiphany-driven gameplay and impossible geometry, Lingo provides a unique and non-linear experience. Somewhere in Clay Nowhere is an exploration-based language decoding game made out of clay. Our little bird Pichon has fallen into the depths of a dark cave. He's too chubby to fly, but he can bounce. That's all for you this week. Like the video, leave a comment for the algorithm. Thanks for watching.